Hey Reluctant Preppers, you could have been watching this video the moment it came out. By going to healingyourself.life and subscribing to our new sister channel, Healing Yourself. See you there. Healingyourself.life provides information for awareness, educational, and support purposes only and does not diagnose or prescribe treatment for any medical condition. Viewers are encouraged to do their own due diligence and consult with their own medical caregivers before making personal treatment decisions. Welcome back to HealingYourself.Life. I'm Dunnigan Kaiser. I'm Melody Kaiser. And we're here to take you with us on a road trip that we recently made to Europe and to see some of the beautiful historic sites there and some natural wonders and to see family as well. And uh, we also practiced some of the practices that we showed you in a previous uh, video about how to stay healthy while traveling. I was able to, because we have to worry about our weakened immune mm -hmm. systems from Lyme and Candida right. and leaky gut. Uh, however, even despite our precautions, Melody uh, came down with some illnesses on this vacation. And uh, I mean, it was really unnerving at the airport, even while we were waiting at the gate to right. get on. Many people coughing. Passengers, and crew. I, it, I must have been flu season there. Sneezing, um, coughing. Anyway, I ended up with a very bad sore throat. Um, and my lymph nodes, you could just see they were very, very swollen. Um, managed to still um, enjoy the trip, but not as much as I would have liked to. So we'll be maybe in, um, learning some more uh, techniques that I can stay healthy uh, on our next travels. And uh, we did find out that even in the confined quarters of the airplane, mm -hmm. perhaps a uh, mask they have. I we, will in the future. We had it at home. We just yeah, didn't bring it we along. Didn't, we didn't. And I, it will be in my health toolbox for next time to uh, wear a, a mask just because I need to with my fragile immune system at this point. So come on along with us to a Mediterranean cruise. <laughs> we flew from Detroit, Michigan, all the way to France was our first stop. And then we connected to another flight all the way to Venice, Italy. Our itinerary was going to take us across four different countries in Europe that we've never been to before, starting from Venice, Italy, and that's where we'll first show you about how we uh, did some preparations on the plane to make sure that we didn't catch anything directly from touching surfaces on the plane. So we're back, Melody and Dunnigan, and we're going to show you how to wipe down your airline uh, seating areas so that it's clean because they do not clean them at every, after every flight. A lot of people get sick on airplanes. That's very true. So one of the things we like to do that's one of your dirtiest spots are the handrails here and inside and your tray. Um, so it looks like our tray is inside. So we pull that out. Oh my goodness. Basically, any um, surfaces that you plan on touching, like your yeah, belt your buckle. belt buckles, very also but get very very dirty. Window handle. <laughs> <laughs> and this other seat part. You got another tray? Oh, I guess we have two trays, so I'm going to have to switch to another um, right. right here. And we bring the travel size. It's very convenient. You can get them anywhere at Walmart, um, and they're and not expensive. Um, that way they fit easily. So I'll just wipe this down. Yes. Anywhere that you're going to touch. Now there are people who also wear masks. We even purchased a box of these hospital-grade uh, masks at the local pharmacy. You can get them anywhere. They're much more comfortable than those stiff paper things that you sometimes see, um, and they, they fit pretty nicely. I guess my main 
reluctance is just embarrassment. I think people's yeah, gonna think I I'm think carrying so some deadly disease, like have the right. plague or something, and, right. and and stay away from me. Or not let me fly or some yeah. stupid thing. And I've been wearing them now outside because of allergies, which I never had before, but I've developed them here. Um, again, who knows if it's from the Lyme disease? So I wear them outside, um, and they work. You don't. I feel like the air that you're breathing isn't as fresh, but you certainly aren't getting in the molds and the pollen and so that saves me it helps. and on the airplane it'd be like and on the airplane it'd be the and sneezing coughing. and the germs that they are and it's getting around in in the plane the other one that i want to just warn you against is that um coffee not to order the coffee dr oz um, was saying they don't clean the pots like they're supposed to change so, out the batches yeah they don't change the plus you get their tap water or whatever yeah it's not the best so you should avoid the coffee and the ice uh, I would also avoid the ice if you can. Just one more thing is if you um, are going to be touching the pockets in front of you, it's wise to wipe them down too because, again, there's tons of passengers and you don't know who's been sick or not. Okay. We arrived at the airport in Venice and our taxi driver said he couldn't take us to our hotel because his taxi didn't swim. Mm -hmm. There are no vehicles allowed in the city of Venice, so we had to carry our luggage across these little bridges across these canals. It was easy to get lost. We went past gondolas and, and all these canals, uh, and it was nice to see children in the streets. Mm -hmm. It's like stepping they back were, in time. Yeah, able to play freely without adult supervision. We finally right. arrived at the door of our hotel, which is obviously has a big <laughs> sign. You see the sign? Neither did we. No. We couldn't find the hotel. It was really difficult. We were dehydrated. Yes. And, was, and we finally found it. We got to walk everywhere, though. We did. And uh, visit St. Mark's Basilica. This mm -hmm. is a picture of us in front of St. Mark's Basilica. Yeah, and, and thankfully I was sick through all, I'm not sick, I was healthy through that whole time period, so that was good. And this is the square outside St. Mark's Basilica between there and a large palace called the Doge's Palace that was a mm -hmm. big political center. At one time, Venice had the most powerful navy in the world, and they had, the Republic of Venice was on par to any other one of the uh, empires you've heard of. This is beautiful architecture inside that palace. When we were time to leave Venice, we decided rather than schlepping our baggage, we actually were able to get a private water taxi, which is the way to go. It's yeah, like a it was limousine. amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. Yes, the ride was very amazing, and we had this private um, boat, and it drove us all the way up to our uh, cruise ship. It was absolutely wonderful. Um, the other one, which is a public bus, that would, we would have had to take a public bus and then a taxi to get to where our was, and it would have been, been jam-packed with a bunch of people again, probably coughing, and this was much, much better. I will say the little ones did have a cold, so I don't know whether I got sick on the plane mm -hmm. um, or whether I got sick from the little ones. Um, so, But I was healthy in Venice, which was great. The second country we visited was Montenegro, and uh, it's appeared in some famous James Bond movies recently, but we had never been there for sure. The old world charm of this was beautiful. It's mm -hmm. The architecture is Venetian, because it was part of the Venetian Republic and heavily influenced by, by the architecture of Venice, and uh, very sturdy, clean, and uh, walkable. And, uh, but the, arch the geography was amazing because Montenegro is uh, characterized by these uh, mountainous fjords that reach down to the sea, very sheltered and protected. And you see two islands there. The one on the left is a natural island. The one on the right we visited is, was made man-made when some sailors uh, at sea were going to crash, but they found a, a picture of Our Lady uh, on the rocks, and they, they, they and the townspeople built this island out of stones brought on ships, and they built this chapel. Uh, the Chapel of Our Lady of the Rocks, and uh, in honor of her. And we saw a, a reconstructed sailing ship mm -hmm. sail by afterwards. Right, and many people who um, have weddings look like they come to the island, and, and I don't know if they still leave something for um, Mary or not, but um, they, they come there and take pictures and things like that. And on the way back to town, we noticed this, uh, just again, the architecture 
and the geography uh, juxtaposed so beautifully there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Montenegro is has both uh, very sunny and swim and swimming and, oh, and, and in the in the here's summer. the picture where we got um, their local brandy. And the tour guide was very good about. She talked about how her I think it's I don't think it was her mother or grandmother I can't remember is way into her 90s and drinks it every day. So I don't know if it's a healthy thing, but it sure helped my sore throat. On to Greece, and our first stop was Thera, which is a small fishing village near Santorini, a famous uh, resort town and beautiful, where you see these whitewashed uh, buildings. We went to below the small village at the bottom of the mountain here and uh, boarded a ship, a uh, very beautiful little, um, uh, sort of like a hard, hardwood beautiful ship, and took it across the harbor to a volcanic observatory where there's actually an active volcano and... If you look around the horizon there, what you see is that all the islands around here are in a circle, and you are in the center of a collapsed caldera of an ancient volcano that erupts every 10,000 years, and it's due. It's mm -hmm. overdue. Mm -hmm. And that, they think that that's where the lost, ca the lost continent of Atlantis, Atlantis fell into the ocean yeah. right nearby there. Then we went for a lovely swim. And um, there was, it was a, supposedly a hot spring. It wasn't that hot. But again, tried to get my throat, because at that point my throat was hurting, and tried to get that into the medicinal waters, and it didn't help. So, <laughs> Back once again at the town of Santorini, we went up the hill on that uh, cable car ride you see to the top and got to walk around the village up there and see the shops. And we had stopped for uh, dinner overlooking the beautiful uh, Caldera uh, Bay down below. There's our cruise ship down there. And uh, that was our visit to, to Santorini, Greece. Our next stop took us to the small village of Katakalon, Greece, which is a short bus ride away from and past a bunch of solar-topped buildings, which was just amazing, both photovoltaic and hot water solar, to the ancient site of Olympia, the, the, the site of the first Olympic Games. And it's a historic site where it used to be both uh, pagan religious ceremonies there, but celebrating not only athletics, but also their religion. We went ahead and walked into the main arena there and got to see the ruins of the actual places where the Olympic Games, the first Olympic Games ever were held and held for hundreds of years. And people would come from all over the ancient world to compete together uh, at this training grounds and uh, dormitories and the main stadiums and uh, hot baths and all that sort of thing. Uh, so they also had religious ceremonies there for their, for, to all the various pagan gods, and, and they had, uh, uh, they took it all very, very uh, seriously. It was a, it was a big uh, center of their of their cultural life. This is our guide showing us a reconstructed image of what the, the place had looked like back in the ancient days, and uh, we were able to spend uh, a couple hours. Yeah, uh, it was great. And the other thing she always mentioned there was that women were not allowed in to see the games. Um, I guess there were priestesses there, but not in the games themselves. Uh, they could light the torch, and I assume then they had to leave as well. And so that means mothers could not see their sons, and they would sneak in sometimes. Afterwards, we stopped by a Greek restaurant with costumed dancers who first showed us several Greek dances and also invited us out onto the floor to dance with them. Then we were able to return to our port and get back on the ship and head to Croatia. In Croatia, we visited the only country not in the Eurozone of these. We saw the Correct. old world uh, buildings and uh, a lot of the architecture. We saw like Soviet style architecture yes, before we left town. Yes, it was very town. stark. But out of town, the history, the layers of history, mm -hmm. this was an aqueduct built by the Roman Emperor Diocletian back in the early few hundreds uh, AD and then out into a valley where you can see on a distant hillside a, a fortress on top of the hill. That's called the Key because it overlooks the entire valley and controlled all the flow of people from the mountains through the valleys to the coast and the, and the uh, Adriatic Sea. And we also saw Wind. uh, Wind's farm as we passed through mm -hmm. the countryside and very stony soil and a lot of the uh, stone walls that the original farmers had to have them and their families and their children build from picking the stones out of the field so they could be farmable. We finally arrived at the Kirka Nature uh, Park. We saw the Kirka River flowing through a forest and there's a boardwalk built all mm -hmm. throughout the forest so you can walk for uh, gosh, it was a couple mile loop. Mm -hmm. I think we went yeah, it was on wonderful. Through, Very this, beautiful. through this flooded forest and seeing these chub fish swimming everywhere. You looked in the in the water, 
uh, and very crystal clear water yeah, it's very and nice. little waterfalls and big waterfalls mm -hmm. uh, in different places there. And we could swim after and we did. And we did, right yeah. at the base of this falls. My throat was still hurting, so a lot of the, my memory is gone from there. We finally returned to Venice, Italy, and mm -hmm. we stayed at a very modern hotel uh, where they had this automatic orange juicing machine, the freshest orange juice you've ever had because it was in an orange like a minute before you drank yeah, it. Yeah, it was great. It was awesome. <laughs> and they also had honey right from the comb as yeah. part of their, so it was a very, um, uh, very modern, mm -hmm. uh, but lots of natural amenities in this. Uh, beautiful Anya Park Hotel near mm -hmm. the Venice airport. Yeah, it was great. And then it was farewell to Venice and on home. Coming along with us on our Mediterranean cruise. <laughs> yep, this will be the next thing I wear on the airplane at least, and um, maybe in any other enclosed type places. And also um, a couple other things that I'll be doing is it's called UVBI, which they take some... Ultraviolet blood irradiation. Thank you. And they also put ozone in there. And um, they take a little bit of blood out, and then they put it back in after they've run it through. And that builds your immune system, along with some other things, to try to keep me healthy the next time we have to travel. So I guess the good thing is this uh, vacation cost you a lot less than it cost <laughs> us. So thanks for coming along with us yes. and for and joining any, us. And any other ideas for staying healthy while traveling would be great to share. I'm sure other people are interested. Yeah, so add your uh, any comments down below of things that have worked well for you to stay healthy while traveling. Mm -hmm. Make sure you click the thumbs up wherever it is. And uh, go ahead and tell your friends to come on and watch us at uh, healingyourself.life and the other experts and doctors and so on that we have on here. So just glad you're here. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm.